we are now going to continue the process of electrolytic cells. Here we are electrical energy converted to chemical energy. Therefore we are applying an external EMF. We are applying current. We are putting the electrons into this. Okay? These are reactions that are not spontaneous. They need energy to happen and we're giving them the energy now. Right? Cool. Um, so what do we do? Let's have a question over here and we will do an example. Okay. <clears throat> what if we've got sodium nitrate? NaNO3 and it's in water, therefore it's aqueous. All right, now we apply and we apply an external DC power source. Okay. Obviously questions will be why why does it have to be DC? It's a good question. Why? Because what happens in an AC? The Electrode and anode would be boing, boing, boing. You'd never actually get anything, would you? So we're using DC in these scenarios because what stays positive must stay positive. Okay, that sounds like one of those motivational things, doesn't it? Okay, cool. Let's continue. They have told us that that is in solution. We apply an external DC power source. Okay, and they say, right, predict what happens. Step one, draw it, yeah, 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 draw it. So what do I do? I draw my pot and I say, okay, here's my pot. Please, guys, when you draw, I say to some of my students, uh, you know what? If you drew this, uh, you're not going to get very far. Draw a big pot. Don't draw it so small that you can't write on it. Give yourself space. Paper's cheap. So what do we say? We say in here now I have got Na plus and NO3 minus ions, haven't I? Here's my electrodes. Okay. It doesn't matter which way you join these up. No difference. Positive, negative. I don't even have to know which is which. Okay, if I can't remember, I'd rather you didn't try and remember it because the chances are you're going to get confused with galvanic and electrolytic cells. I do. I just work it out. So I say, okay, you are positive, therefore I am going to attract the NO3 is going to go there because he's minus, he wants to go to the positive, leaves me with the Na plus, wants to go that way. Okay, and we already know that sodium doesn't come out in water. If they'd have put magnesium, um, uh, it also doesn't come out in water, it's above. But you can call it magnesium if you like, it doesn't matter. So now I say, right, I look at what are my options. Okay. Remember, we've also got the H2O because it's aqueous here. I then turn around and I say, okay, look at my options this side. What can happen here? Take the metal first. Na plus, plus one electron could go to Na, solid. Also the top side, remember, I've put in my line already. And that says on the top side is 2H2O plus 2E could go to H2 gas plus 2OH minus. Hang on, now I look and I say, this is gain, therefore this must be reduction, therefore cathode. I didn't have to remember a thing. I just remember oil rig and then I work it out. I don't need to know more. Let's look at the other side. We put in our options here. Option one is the NO3. Now we go and we find NO3 ion plus 4H uh, plus three electrons. All right, is going to go to NO plus 2H2O. All right, cool, there we go, that's going to happen. And that's the N, only NO1 we've got, NO3 one that we've got. So we've got him, we've looked, okay, he's down there at the plus 0.96. 
The other one we've got is we've got our lower level O2, right? O2 plus 4H plus plus 4E. Can be going. I'm writing them in the reduction format from the table. If you are confused here, I'm writing them as I'm picking them off the table. I have to turn them around because this here is reduction and on this side I'm going to have oxidation. So we turn around. Okay, I will talk that through again. All I've done is I've written them down from the table. But that's reduction and we've already got reduction here. So I must have the opposite half must be turned around to give me the oxidation version. Okay, so I turn around to see the actual oxidation reaction. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everybody out there. So therefore, it's going to be NO plus 2H2O. It's going to go to the NO3 minus plus 4H plus plus 3 electrons. Or we've got 2H2O. Okay, 2H2O uh, is going to go to O2 gas plus 4H plus plus 4 electrons. And what happens? Oxygen. Liberated. Why? Because what we said before is basically the halogens come out if they're there. So you'll get bromine, iodine, chlorine coming out over here. Okay, I haven't even labeled anodes and cathodes yet, have I? Okay, this is then going to be the anode, isn't it? This will be the anode over here. So I can label anode and cathode. My recipe works every time. So what happens? Oxygen is liberated because previously we said if there's bromine, iodine or chlorine, they will come out before oxygen. Otherwise, oxygen will come out before other anions. So you're not going to get your uh, um, NO3, SO4s, etc. They're not going to come around from this process. So in essence, we have said at the cathode, at the cathode, we're going to get this is above. Therefore, we get H2 gas. Let's just, sum let's just summarize. So at the cathode, at the cathode, at the cathode, okay, we are going to get H2 gas. And at the anode, we're going to get O2 gas, which means actually, Although we had NaNO3 in there, what we did is we did hydrolysis of actually just the water itself. Just quickly, what if we'd have had zinc nitrate, ZnNO3? You'll look, if you look at your table, there's my hydrogen one. It's my 2H2O plus 2H2O plus OH. That there, zinc is just below. Therefore, the zinc's going to come out. We will not get hydrogen gas. You'll get zinc first. If it was magnesium or chromium, you're going to get the hydrogen given off. That's the way you interpret the tables. Now, okay, if we go from there, the next part of this, that was an example. The next part of this is we want to talk about well, I, I'm actually going to split it up first into the uses of electrochemistry. This is for the chemical engineer in you. This is for the usage, uses of electrochemistry. Right. <clears throat> no, you can't do this stuff at home either. All right. So what have we got here? First one is we've got something called electro. Plating. Two, I'm going to explain what these are. Electro winning. Okay, or refining. Or purifying. Step three, 
Um, number three is large-scale manufacture. And we are going to look at two. We're going to look at 3.1, chlorine production. And 3.2, aluminium production. You know what, we'll, we'll, we'll add a few more when we look at the, the, um, the sort of the higher end. For those of you interested, we'll add a couple more. Right now, let's focus on these two because they're the ones that majority of the questions are going to be about. Now, what do I mean by electroplating? I mean, this is what we would call gold, silver, nickel, plating. Copper, chromium. Okay, so if I make something nice and shiny, okay, the chrome on something, the gold, the silver, the I actually don't make it out of platinum or out of silver or out of gold. What I do is I take a lump of normal metal and I stick some gold to it, or some tin, or some zinc, or whatever. I stick it to it. So inside, it's just metal. Could be a lump of iron, or lump, lump of steel. And what I do is I then stick electrons or stick the actual gold or silver to it. Let's just have a look. Okay, let us look here at our... We said electroplating. Electroplating. What do we want to do? Let's just examine first. We deposit a layer of either high value material or sacrificial. Remember the sacrificial anode? Or protective, protective metal onto another metal. Okay, that's what we're doing. So we've got gold and silver plating, uh, chrome plating, nickel plating, zinc plating. It doesn't matter. That is the process we actually want to do. We want to take a lump of material. So let's see. We said, okay, hang on. We want to take a lump of material. This is our object. And onto that object, we want to, let's say, gold plate. It doesn't matter which one it is. Gold plate. All right. So what do I want to do to this? I actually want to take gold which is AU plus 3, and I want to stick it onto that. That's as simple as it is, isn't it? That's what I want to do. So what has to happen here? This side, I have to have AU plus 3, plus 3 electrons changing to, sorry, I, I do forget to write aqueous, AU solid. That's what we want, is it not? I want the gold to stick to it. Bang, like so. So I've got to have gold ions in my liquid. Okay? And I have to have my object over there. So therefore, this object has got to be collect connected electrically to have this process occurring. Now I'm going to draw the pot. There it is. All right, here's my liquid. If this is happening over here, right, we are sticking to it. This object must be what? Okay. We are sticking electrons. We are gaining. Therefore, this must be reduction. The reduction side. And it must be negative. Why? Because the negative will attract the positive. It attracts the cation, doesn't it? Okay. How did I remember that? 
anion, another negative ion. Remember, anion, another negative ion. So therefore, this is my cation. And it goes across to there. I've worked all this out. Okay? But just from first principles, haven't we? This is the reduction side. Reduction cathode. Okay. Cool. Now I can put in my battery. I know, it's, I know that it's going to be fastened to the negative side. Let's put in. Now let's work out what has to happen over here. All right. Where am I getting this gold from? Where would I get silver from? Nickel, copper, anything I'm going to plate, you actually start the other side and you would have pure metal here. In this case, AU solid. So if it was copper plating, that would be pure copper. Okay, tin, pure tin. We're going to talk about how to get pure tin and pure copper in a few minutes. But that's what we want to do. Because we want to dissolve that side. So this side, I need AU solid going to AU plus 3 plus 3 electrons. Okay? That's what we want, isn't it? And this there is going to be then the plus side. So this therefore is going to be, that there is the loss. This is the oxidation side right and it is going to then be the anode so i've got anode over here and i've got on the other side let's call it back to red i've got my cathode right there we go that's the basic circuit that we've got for plating we stick our, <coughs> our object that we want to plate onto the negative side because this is the negative side and this is the positive side. Correct? We worked that out without even having to look. We started and we said, what do we want to do? Muchly how the scientists um, do it. Especially if they're an engineer. So we've got that situation. Now, how do we actually do an example of this? Okay, let me just put my one of a thousand reference books away. Let's say we now have the question here, all right? Gold comes from there, we've done that, the anode. Oh, and the now the last question here, I just want to do this in blue, if you'll excuse me. The last question is the electrolyte. Okay, this needs AU ions in it. to start. How do I get it? I need a salt of gold and basically a suitable salt for this one is gold is gold cyanide. Okay. For silver we use AgNO3, silver nitrate. Because NO3 is highly soluble. I'm doing it with gold. Why don't you take exactly the same example when we've gone through it and do it with silver? That you'll see the difference is silver's AG. Okay. Um, AG plus, um, let's check. I can't remember. And why should I? I've got the table to look at. So I say, silver, what are you? You're AG plus one. Right. But follow, it's exactly the same process over here all right that we're going to follow so for silver we use the silver nitrate now what you can do is that is a g plus one n o three minus one and essentially the silver is going to go through and go onto the other ion the difference here it's a plus one let me now take an example let's do an example together the example here Okay, is I want to, let's say, here's an example. Let's say we wish to gold plate an item. 
and we require, we calculate, we require uh, 0 0.05 grams of gold, which is a U, correct? I always get is a U. Step one. We're doing electrochemistry. If we're doing electrochemistry, we draw what we're given. So we want to gold plate something, so we're going to draw it. I'm going to put, we've done it already. This is going to be the negative, positive, negative, positive side. And here we go. This is my AU solid. This is my negative side, positive side. And we can go up. Well, we can rework it out again. What do I want? I want on this side... We want on this side, we just bring it down a little bit, okay, there we go. On this side here, we want that AU plus 3, because my AU plus is going to migrate towards that side. The AU plus 3, plus 3 electrons is going to go to AU gold. Here's now where we get technical. This is one mole of those, plus three moles of those gives me one mole of those. N, B, we're going to need that. Cool, we are there now. And on the oxidation side, the anode side, cathode, remember, okay, anode over here. So on this side over here, we have got that. Now we always go to the balanced chemical equation and what we have said is my balanced chemical equation, I'm going to write it again, AU plus 3 plus 3 moles of electrons okay, is going to go to AU solid. 1 mole plus 3 moles goes to 1 mole. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to my original what I said in, in the lectures when we started stoichiometry two years ago, before we got here, we said, given, all right? Well, given I've got, given I've got 0.5, uh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 grams of gold. Okay. Here we go. Therefore, what do I go? I always go for moles. The mole hole is my recipe. We hit that mole hole, we can go backwards and forwards. And everything then is according to the mole ratio, which is what I used to call the recipe, didn't I? One cup, three cups, one cup, mole ratio. 0 0.05. So therefore, we need to get two moles. Therefore, we need molar mass. The molar mass of gold is 190. I've been also told not to do that. 197 grams per mole. Therefore, number of moles. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. So N is 0 0.05 over 197, which is equal to 2.538. 1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of gold. This is moles of gold that we need because this is reactants, this is product. We need that gold. That's what we've calculated to plate out. What do I do next? Next I say, okay, now I go through the mole hole and here we go. Therefore, how many moles of electrons do I need? I need 3 times 2.5381 times 10 to the minus 4. So I need therefore 7.6142 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of electrons. What is precipitating this gold out? It's the electrons you're giving it from the battery, 
isn't it? That's where it's coming from. It's not doing it by itself. These are electrolytic cells. We are supplying the electrons here, guys. Therefore, that's how many moles of electrons we need. Aha! Logical. My next step is then to say, all righty-ho. If that's the case, that's moles of electrons. So therefore, how many electrons? How many electrons do I actually need? I need, right? Anybody tell me? It's, if that's moles, I have to multiply number of moles by Avogadro's number. So I take 7.6142 times 10 to the minus 4, and I multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Just to recap Avogadro's number, one mole of tennis balls is so many. One mole of anything, one mole of anything, of peas. Okay, one mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things. One mole of peas. Boom. There we go. So, there many moles is equal to so many electrons. Is 4.5838 times 10 to the 20 electrons. That's what we need. Okay. Note I didn't ask a question here. Because... These could be stepwise solutions. This is the way you're going to go through it. Or backwards. Okay, we'll do one of them that are backwards at a different time. So what do I say? All right, I say, say we have a current of 0.5 amps available. Okay, how long will it take to plate out whoops i'm thinking of gold to plate out 0 0.05 grams of gold well that's the question well how long do we leave it in the solution same thing isn't it and our answer is well we know i we know I is equal to 0 0.05. But, remember, I is equal to Q over T. Charge over time. Therefore, we can say total charge. How do I work it out? Total charge is equal to number of electrons times, number of electrons times, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Each electron carries that. Therefore, charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. You can use a minus sign. It doesn't matter. All right. Times. All right. How many electrons? Times 4.5838 times 10 to the 20. That gives me 73.3 coulombs. Okay, I always get excited here because this is where the physics side and the chemistry side come together. 73.3 coulombs are required. Therefore, 0 0.5 amps must be 73.3 over time. Time works out to be 146. 0.6 seconds, which is 2.44 minutes. Okay. Now, please note that we could be asked in reverse. Could ask in reverse. You could do this one in reverse. Tell yourself that you have, say, try this. Try 2.5 minutes at 0 0.5 amps and say how much gold will precipitate out. How much AU 
will precipitate out or be plated out. Okay. And it's you just follow it backwards. You'll see you take a 2.5, change that to seconds, right? And then now work out, calculate, Q. That's the total charge. Okay. What's my next step? The next step is divide by the charge on one electron. One electron. Okay. That gives, gives us the number of electrons needed or used. Used up. What is the next? The next is then just take that and then divide by Na to get number of moles and then go through the mole hole and work it out. Very straightforward. Okay. Nickel, that's I think plus one, but you can see the modus operandi is the same. That's electroplating with an example. You can work them out yourself. Try any one of them that you like. Just take the 0.05 uh, grams and try any one of them. Not a, Try lead, try zinc, try magnesium plus twos. Instead of the three, you've got two moles. One is to two is to... So you're just going to multiply by two. Thanks for watching. Cheers. We're going to carry on with these in the next session. Bye for now.